this afternoon here is from Alexander Stanley. He's a part-time open and source enthusiast with a, a full-time soft, full software engineering position at Style Education. He's going to talk about a thing called the Lunchbox Window Manager. I spent three and a half years living in Indonesia and lunch came in a box very often. <laughs> cool. So I'm a little bit curious about this one. Yeah. So. Thank you. OK. Thank you for that. So hello, everyone. Um, thank you for the introduction. I'm Alessandra Stanley. Uh, I work at Style Education, uh, where we make an uh, interesting online learning platform that enables teachers to make inter like interactive lessons. And it's targeted at primary and secondary schools, where I get to work on everything from UX down to protocol buffers and Ruby microservices. But I'm going to talk to you about our window manager. So firstly, why do we need another window manager? Well, I feel that I found quite a few problems with your sort of traditional stacking window managers. Um, starting off with your corner um, buttons. So you've got these color drops on OS X, which are fairly ambiguous, in my opinion. There's not really much indicators. You just have to learn what they mean. And in Windows XP and um, other operating systems, you've got toggle buttons which change state. So it's not that clear, really, if you have a window which is um, a reasonable size, if um, hitting the, um, the maximize button is actually going to maximize it or um, iconify it, in my opinion. Uh, you've also got um, a bit of a scalability problem. If you have a whole bunch of stacked windows, it becomes really hard to switch between them, it, especially once they become more than about uh, three levels deep. So if you have a window um, like, like cascaded like this and you um, choose one from the middle, then you can't actually switch between them anymore. And so like if you have you know, three or four windows, even just like terminals and, and um, web browsers and things like that, you might have one of them floating on top of the other one in a way which seems reasonable, but then once you actually start using it, it becomes a bit harder. Um, so the other problem is it's easy to lose windows off the edge of the screen. So I've seen this happen quite a lot in things like Photoshop and stuff like that, where you'll have even an experienced user has a little palette window off to the side. They're trying to do something. They move it off, and then they move it off a bit more, get back to whatever they were doing. And then sometime later, they're like, where did that palette window go? And they try and recover it. But it hasn't actually been minimized, so they can't even recover it. It's already on the screen, even though it's only got like five or six pixels showing. And it's very tedious to rearrange your windows. So even if you have used a split screen feature from Windows 7 or something like that, uh, if you do need to resize them a bit, it's very tedious to go for that very fine edge, move it a bit, change the other window, move it back again. So that's something that I wanted to fix. And I think that that naturally leads into a tiling window manager because surely it can save you a bit of time. We can automate these tasks. But although there are a lot of other tiling window managers, they're typically targeted at more advanced users. They're very keyboard focused. And they tend to have fixed layouts where you'll have you know, one large partition and then a number of other partitions on one side. And you can adjust that main split. But what if I've got an enormous 21 by 9 WHQD monitor and I want to just have them not overlap without having to think about a prearranged layout or understand that notion and, and how to switch between it. So I wanted to make it a, a window manager that had a fairly user-friendly interface that, was, that you could see what the state of the window was in and how to resize it. So, and I called it Lunchbox because it has fixed edges and Neat partitions. <laughs> oh, excuse me. All right. So the first feature in the Lunchwatch window manager is that you can't actually take windows off the screen. Um, I'll show you in a demo in a second, but they squish up against the edge. The other feature, which is, um, as far as I know, the only window manager that actually does this, is that tiled windows are tiled dynamically. So if you have a bunch of windows next to each other, you can just resize them, and they'll resize each other. You don't need to have a fixed layout. And I also have a system for uh, swapping between windows where I've made the title in the title bar into a, a menu. 
So let's see if this works. Always a little biased, but I'm going to go for the live demo. So can I? Okay, so I'll just go to a simple workspace. So this one, um, I'll just demonstrate that as you move the window towards the edge of the screen, it just resizes like that very naturally. You can also just um, alt grab anywhere on the window like many other Linux window managers. So it's kind of fun. You can kind of, you know, Hulk slam your window around to resize it. Um, you can, uh, I'm just trying to think what's a good program. So if I go over to Gedit or something, here you can see I just resize a window and it happily resizes. Um, the terminal's a bit obstinate because it wants to be a multiple of a character width, and this has actually been a tricky issue for me to get around. The other thing is I don't actually enforce that all windows are always tiled. So if I open a dialog box here in Gedit, um, that defaults to a floating mode. So you can see I've got a simple mode menu that reflects the state that the window is in fairly easily, or clearly in my opinion, um, rather than m command buttons that change state. So if I want to get rid of that, I can just do that. And of course, everyone is waiting with bated breath to see the famous GLX gears, which must be done in all window management presentations, apparently. So we'll chuck that in there. And this, that one's in floating mode, so I'll put that in tiling. So it grabs that. You can also double click to make windows expand. I can, if I just click on the side, it will just expand in the direction that I've clicked. In this case, it's asked to make it as big as it can in the width, which was probably not what I wanted, actually. Um, so I will pop that back over here. Tiling, and if I just double click, it'll expand like that. Um, obviously, I can still tweak these mechanics. I think what I'll change it to do is if you're, oh, can you guys actually see that? Okay, from my perspective, I can't see that at all. Um, to expand inside the space that it's already in. Um, so that's, that's always an option to just tweak this behavior a bit. Another feature is that every program is inside its own workspace. Um, it works particularly well with um, multiple desktop managers. So if I want to go over to Nautilus, um, it's got its own desktop. If any of you remember, before Unity was Unity, it originally was Netbook Launcher, which was probably inspired by the EPC's default desktop. Um, I wanted to show that here because it's another desktop and I can easily handle that, but I found an alternative program which isn't as shiny but still works, it's called LX Launcher. Does it still work? No, it doesn't still work. Sometimes things refuse to render, which is really annoying. Um, and it's just because they're being manipulated in a way they didn't expect. So that wasn't quite as seamless as I hoped, but you can imagine um, if I get all my hints and things like that in properly, you can just have a, a really quick launcher program that takes up your whole desktop, or you can have Nautilus, or you can have another file manager if you want to have another file manager, which is something that most window managers can't handle at all. Uh, if you want to recover windows, um, You've got the window menu. Uh, every window can be in every workspace at this point, um, and they can have their own arrangements. So I had Xclock in the gedit um, workspace. I can just hide it. If I want to recover it, I can um, go into Xclock from the window menu again. Another feature is, um, as I said before, a sort of a tab replacement feature, which is the ability to swap a window with any other window. So um, I can swap those two on the screen or to make it more of a tab replacement. If I, if I hide one of the windows, I can swap them around like that. So they're the main features. Um, I've put in a bit of effort to make a, some of the EWMH hints work, uh, but there's obviously a lot more work in that area to be done and a lot of tweaks and things that can be done. I'd like to be able to manage workspaces better and have icons and all kinds of things. but. Um, there's a lot of work, even just trying to get it to respect like the min, the min width um, in different cases. Uh, a lot of windows don't actually set them properly. So I suppose another torture test is, is always the GIMP. Uh, most window managers don't handle it very well, especially tiling window managers. They'll just let you go into a 
floating mode fallback. Uh, for example, Blue Tile suggests that in their tutorial. Um, so I'm pretty proud that this sort of works, I'll say. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is the incremental resize behavior again, um, which is a little bit troublesome. So yeah, so they're the main features. So I'll go back to my presentation. Oh, where's my play? Play side true. Okay. So, that was, they were the main features of the window manager. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about X11. Uh, obviously, it's ancient, it's reliable, it's really not going away anytime soon. Um, Wayland is cool, but it doesn't have important features like full OpenGL support, because that would involve them pulling in all of X anyway, which they really, really don't want to do. Uh, it obviously has no built-in window manager, so uh, that's great for me. I feel like it's, it's more of a Unixy philosophy. You can have programs doing um, one thing well. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't want to be opinionated about how it's used, um, whereas I think this is going to be more of a problem in something like Wayland where it doesn't have a, a standard protocol for window managers to communicate with. But I'll just introduce some of the basic terms of X so people can understand a bit more about uh, what's going on inside the window manager. So in the X window system, you have uh, a window, which is not the entire frame that you see before you, but uh, just an abstract idea of a rectangle or a different shape, which can accept events, have a background pix map, and um, be nested inside each other. So if you go back, if I show you my window frame again, or anything else, all of the buttons, all of the controls, they're all separate windows inside the X window system. And it has a, uh, server side string system called X atoms, which is a little bit hard to get your head around at first, but it's how all the communication is done. So every window has a list of atoms associated with it, and that's how programs communicate with the window manager about what they want to have happen. Um, things like have, you know, what name do they have and, and those sorts of properties. And, and each, each window can also have a cursor, so I can change the cursor around, which is cool. So I wrote my window manager in Xlib, uh, famously hard to use, um, but I chose to use it because at the time I actually started the project, um, XCB was still very new, and it was one of my first programming projects, so it was kind of scary. Um, it has very high-level synchronous calls, so you just have a, a high-level uh, call like you know get window properties, and that's completely synchronous. So get window properties will try and fill in any properties that aren't, it doesn't already know about by actually checking with the server. So it will flush all of your pending X events and wait for the server to come back with those results before it sends it to you. Uh, XCB, on the other hand, is a complete rewrite that matches the X protocol more directly and you can send your requests and then ask for the results back as two separate calls rather than have synchronous calls. Um, from a software engineering perspective, it's really interesting because they actually made it uh, using a high level protocol description language in XML. I think because of lessons learned with Xlib where it was just so complicated and had so many calls and so many corner cases and well known sorts of bugs that uh, they wanted to come up with a better system. And it now interoperates with Xlib because they actually re-implemented Xlib on top of XCB. So I thought that was kind of cool as well. So here's um, some of the very, very basic calls and sort of very simple outline of what a window manager looks like. It's completely hacked up, um, but it's not really much more complicated than this. So you open your display. Your display can have lots of different screens. Um, Generally, most window managers only handle one screen and one display. Uh, you have your root window. Um, the root window is pretty important. You want to, as a client, um, try and map your application window onto the root window. It's an immediate child of the root window. But as a window manager, I can run this call called select input, which enables me to intercept all of those calls. and ask for all of their events be sent to me rather than just happen directly inside the X server. So 
I then just drop straight into my event loop after I've selected a lot of other things like events and things like that. I can create my frame. I can uh, reparent the window onto another window, which is the actual frame that I've just created with my theme and everything. And then I can decide whether to map it. So this is the basics of a reparenting window manager, which is a design decision I made early on because I actually wanted to try and enforce that windows didn't overlap. Uh, a lot of other window managers actually uh, don't do that. They just allow windows to do what they would normally do and, and resize themselves when they want to resize themselves. Um, and then you kind of play catch up as the window manager to fit your frame around what they're doing. Um, this isn't as straight, like you, there's no real like clear great system here um, because as you saw with the terminal window, uh, you can still have a fight. The terminal wants to be a certain size and I still have to react to those requests because other windows might legitimately want to expand. For example, if you've got a um, you know, synaptic package manager installation dialog box and you want to expand it and see what the co console is actually doing as you install your packages, um, you need to be able to actually react to that. So it's actually, but basically the message I think is it's actually not that hard to hack up your own window manager. Um, initially anyway, it's just all the corner cases and all the applications and, and people not following standards properly that actually makes it really hard. So. Um, another feature of my window manager is it's completely themable. Um, you can just make a PNG, like these are the actual theme files, and have a completely different skin. So I would encourage people who are adopting this to go back to their favorite E16 theme and feel like a real hacker with an incredibly gaudy frame and give that a, spill, a, a, a spin. Um, I feel like there's some interesting algorithms in here. Um, to calculate the free space that's available on the screen. Uh, you've got to come up with an algorithm, basically. I did some research and found one which has a really cool proof by induction, but basically, it's fairly simple. You've got your base case, which is a rectangle, which is the biggest rectangle on the screen. As soon as you place another rectangle on that, you then have the four rectangles around the sides of that rectangle, and you basically keep track of them like that. So every time you place another one, you update your list. Uh, the really complicated thing was actually figuring out what's adjacent and getting them to resize, considering things like the increment um, hints which they want, uh, when windows want to be resized to be a particular increment of something, so a character width for the terminal or a um, tool icon for GIMP, and other things just, uh, you know, having the minimum max hints set. I'd actually really appreciate that and I think that's something um, I'd like people to pay more attention to in a window manager, uh, in their programs to consider window managers like this. Um, another interesting thing you can do is really easily freeze your entire event queue. So if you um, happen to try and run this, run an older version of this window manager inside a, like a, a virtual machine or something, um, and you click inside a window, the whole thing would actually freeze because it was expecting to get an enter notify event of the mouse moving into an area where it was keeping track of the state of the pointer in that way. And it had an, a, a grab of the pointer which was intercepting all the pointer events. And inside the VM, that assumption was no longer true. You can click directly through. You weren't getting all your events. So that was a bug I fixed, but it's kind of terrifying. You could just completely lock up everything. <laughs> uh, so there's plenty of bugs. Um, it's not that hard to hack, but um, th yeah, there's still quite a lot that needs to be done. The main problem is there's no X render. So if you resize your um, VMware or virtual um, um, screen, basically, uh, the events aren't properly updated in my window manager. It's not that hard. It's because it's just that I've got some um, silly hard coded assumptions about the screen width not changing essentially, but those calls, if I run them again, will actually update. Um, and as I said, yeah, probably better workspace management people can control um, the different workspaces a bit more directly. So that's basically the presentation, so.
Um, I'm sure we've got heaps of time. <laughs> Does anyone have any um, questions or comments or things they'd like to know? Yep. I, I didn't even get a chance to read them. I was just hoping you could quickly yep. go through. Uh, the second, third, last slide. Yep. Okay. Um. Yeah, so the, maybe some more comments on the, the fourth one there. Okay, so um, in a re, uh, I think most window managers now actually aren't reparenting window managers. So uh, the events that come back to the clients are in a slightly different order. And I think they may be trying to work around bugs in other window managers or things like that. But a lot of um, even popular programs like Firefox, OpenOffice will have this weird behavior where they will initially ask to be the correct size. I will give them that size. And then they will ask to be 200 by 200 pixels for no particular reason that I'm aware of. Uh, yeah, and this is a problem that I've spoken to other window manager creators for these light window managers have encountered. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> I think um, they get a. Yeah, I think it's just that the order, the order of events must be different. So they must think, oh, I'm not being made the size I want to be for some reason, or they, yeah, I actually don't know, but that's a real problem. Another problem is um, uh, I always need to be told that things are dialog boxes that they have um, override redirects um, set, which is a special flag for things like tooltips and stuff like that. Um, because otherwise I'll give them a huge frame um, or I'll try and tile them if I don't know that they're meant to be a dialog box. And that's something that I encountered even just um, running new Firefox. It had a little pop-up for its you know, read aloud mode or side-by-side read -side reading mode, um, which had a frame because it hadn't actually just told me um, that it was a transient window using the 30-year-old standard hint for that. So. Yeah, it's a, bit, it's a bit annoying. And I think these are the sorts of challenges that a lot of the light window managers face, actually. I don't think it's specific to me. It's just that, you know, MetaCity's, you know, 40 or 50,000 lines for a reason. <laughs> um, yeah. Any other questions? I uh, came in a little bit late, so you may have covered this in your presentation. Yeah. What license are you using? Oh, it's GPL3. Awesome. Um, if anyone has any complaints, I can happily relicense it. <laughs> <laughs> because you're the only contributor right now? Yes. Yeah. I should have mentioned that. Yeah. Any other questions? How many lines of code and approximately how many hours? Uh, I think it's probably between two and 3,000 lines. So it's, it's a little bit. Um, it might have crept up more. I haven't actually checked, but I've been putting in more comments, so that's the main thing. <laughs> um, and the amount of time, I think, um, like, I actually started this as a first year project, and I've only just come back to it recently when I realized it was still cool and, and still relevant. Uh, but I probably spent, like, probably like, you know, two weeks or something like that, two or three weeks between semesters, so that's maybe like a month or two altogether of like off and on development. But uh, yeah, I feel like now that I've actually been working for, um, like working in industry for a while, my programming skills have improved a lot and I can look through it and see bugs a lot more easily and I'm expecting development to speed up dramatically. <laughs> Any other questions? I'd, I would I would just be interested to hear what what people think and and are there any things that you know they would like to just suggest or you know things they like about window managers things they dislike about window managers mine or others. Thank you. Can I do that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. The the things you're missing from my use are probably XR and R and. Key yep. bindings, which is you mentioned yes. in the last slide. Yep. There, but we'll get in quickly, and you can have your favoured key binding system, be it via or Emacs, <laughs> in first. <laughs> and refuse to write a configuration file. Yeah, so that's right. <laughs> um, I just wanted to, to reassure you that all of the things that you've mentioned about uh, weird hints and stuff happen with every other tiling window that yep. I've ever looked at. Giant window, tiny windows. Yep. It's very random what yep. things ask for. So it looks really good. Okay. Thank you.
interesting. How do, how do you handle the um, use case of a big monitor and a laptop side by side? It's often one that, that, that comes out. under XRandR. So um, my initial fix will be to ignore that but handle the case of the screen being bigger. So basically, um, when I ask X, the naive implementation will just tell me that the width is um, the biggest space that will include those two screens. Um, so yeah, it will break, but uh, in the future I will be able to implement virtual workspaces without a huge amount of trouble. Just I just need to abstract my um, list of used and unused spaces on the screen a bit more carefully, and I can probably just model that with having a different base case instead of having one rectangle, I have two. <laughs> but yeah, that's an unsolved problem, and it's a little, it's a little bit tricky, but I'm working on it. I don't know if, if this is an X thing or a window manager thing, but yep. one of the things that I found frequently frustrating uh, when having two workspaces, my monitor and my laptop, or even one machine and two laptops, yep. was designating which one I viewed to be my primary. Okay. And um, it, would, it would happen, even like when I had a workstation, two monitors, mm -hmm. some days I would turn it on and it would have changed its mind yep. as to which one was my primary one. And it, it happens with my, lap, my Mac laptop yep. now. I, I plug it into my work monitor, and sometimes it changes its mind. Yep. Is that something that is the window manager's choice or X's? Or as appropriate? Uh, I would like to say neither, um, because I think what you're talking about there is your panel. So in, in Mac OS X, you have your global menu bar, is that, and that's sort of what is defined as being your, oh, sorry, the dock as well. You have the dock. OK. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. I think I might have to get you to clarify that um, later, but it sounds like it's probably a bug in XRandar where it thinks that something has changed in the layout or the order of the monitors has changed or and then it's tried to put them back into a sensible order with the absence of one particular monitor and then put them into the other order again when they've come back. So that's all I can guess. Um, I have a bit of a similar issue because I'm keeping a different uh, arrangement of windows in every workspace. So um, if windows try to resize themselves while they're not in the workspace that you're on and you go back, um, I think things can move. I think it's a bit like being on a plane where you know your luggage might shuffle around while you're not looking. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, I think generally it is a bit of an issue, but I'm not completely sure what the problem is there. But I think, like the problem I'd like to talk about, which is about which is panels, and um, I would like to have more support for interoperating with other panels. Um, I have some at the moment. Um, I had GNOME panel running in there where it um, would be try and be a bit more intelligent about not putting Windows over GNOME panel. Um, but I would like a better solution that didn't require a global menu bar um, had a different sort of system that would scale better to other monitors. Anything else? Anybody in our feature requests? Or? Yep, you've got your chance to get your feature requests in. <laughs> okay, mind reading. <laughs> Eye tracking, yep. Okay, so what would the use case of that be? So like what specifically do you mean? <laughs> okay. So what are the changes in the interface based on your like primary window? Okay, that it's bigger or it's in a different space or it just happens to be where you need it to be? Okay. Well, this, I, when this is finished, this is actually the window manager for you. You don't have to define your own layout. You can just move it around, change your mind, chuck a video in on top, it'll all be fine. <laughs> or in the background, actually. I didn't show that. You can make any window the desktop. Hmm. Thank you. Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, we'll thank Alexander in the usual way. And, uh, <laughs> thank you.